Today's video, we're going to be having a look at the Star Ace. This is the Real Master Series, the television series Arrow 1 8th scale collectible figure. This also marks the second time that we've had a look at a 1 8th scale collectible figure from Star Ace, the first one being the television series Flash. This is the deluxe version of Arrow, product code SA8004A. So the first thing we're going to do is take the tape measure and put it to the top of Arrow's head. There we go. Probably going to be about the same height, if not just a little bit taller. Maybe a little bit by Flash. No, it's about 9.2 inches, the same height as I believe we measured the Flash for. And switching that over to centimeters, the figure stands 30, 23, try, to, try 23, 23.4 centimeters in height. Moving arrow over, here he is next to the flash, which we've already had a look at. You didn't watch the video? Go check out the video. Maybe don't check out the video just yet. Check out the video on this guy and then by all means backtrack and watch the video of the flash. But it does look like they share the exact same height. I actually thought that maybe arrow might have been a little bit taller just because of his hood, but I've got the hood technically tucked back for the time being. So the figures look pretty close, pretty close to being identical. Speaking of identical, well, not quite identical, but he comes with the same similar display base as the Flash, although the Flash was red and had the Flash logo on the top, but the shape, the shape was the same. Here we have Arrow featured on the top there, the television series, so that you know it's from the television series. And like the Flash, it does come with the adjustable wire neck. Um, it's almost kind of like this little accordion, kind of coiled neck. And it does allow for individual, well, I mean, you can get some pretty crazy, <laughs> you probably will never display arrow like that, but I did that just for the sake of showing you guys how adjustable that is. And like the Flash, Arrow's display base also has that clamp waist clip, which also has some felt on the interior there. Let's have a look at the figure. There is a little bit of stuff you'll want to add to him when you immediately get him out of the box. 
Two of them are these shoulder straps. This is going to hold his quiver in place and you just want to drape it onto his shoulder. Now I find it's easiest to know that the side that has the silver or the lighter color there sticking out, sticking that way, is the side that you want to slide this onto his shoulder if that makes any sense. Does that make any sense? I guess it doesn't really matter. You could have it on the other way. I, but it has this natural curve going this way that it makes sense going this way. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Slide that up. Slide it over his shoulder pads. And tucking in place like that. I guess once you get that in place, you really don't need to take them off again. It may require you just to adjust his jacket a little bit. There we go. And he does also come with his quiver. Now his quiver, I'm just going to put the figure here for a second. Don't go anywhere, please. Uh, his quiver is really nicely done here. It kind of has a look like it's almost a faux leather. And you can see that there is a series of arrows in the top there, a total of six. None of which can be removed, so don't even think about trying to remove them. But there is this little clamp on the back here. You see it kind of has a curl. Well, that curl allows the quiver to fit. These little these parts right here will fit over here, if that makes any sense. So take one side, fit it over, and you may just want to bring these over to show you what's going on there. You see? See what I'm talking about? And that fits in place. It's a nice workaround to getting the quiver in place. Sometimes, though, I will admit that if you move things like his head around, I was also trying to put his collar, his hood down, so you could see his face a little bit better. Sometimes it does inadvertently pop off the quiver, but it's very quick to put back in place. And uh, Bob's your uncle. We'll get air right there, and we'll have a look at his interchangeable heads. Okay, so this guy gets two head sculpts. One doesn't have the mask. One does have the mask. You could probably look at this one and know which one I'm talking about here. This is the unmasked version. It does look fairly like the actor Stephen Amell, who plays Arrow in the TV series. And just to show you the comparison between the two, there he is next to the mask. Now, I don't think there's really much different between the two head sculpts. Like, the expression is the exact same. The only thing that's different is that this one does have the paint over top. And I don't know if you can see it though, but there is even this outline of the mask on his actual eyes. This isn't the the paint that he's smudged on. Instead, this looks like the actual mask. Now you can swap out either one of the heads, but the thing you have to be careful of is that you don't accidentally knock off the quiver. So I think for that purpose, I'm gonna take the quiver off. Being that these are thinner plastic, I certainly don't want those breaking on me. So I'll show you the two head sculpts right there. Not a whole lot different, one can easily say. I'll go ahead and take the head sculpt off. And in this case, it's not quite like Flash. Flash, you took like the whole head off, including the neck. Arrow here, on the other hand, you're keeping the neck on and you're only just changing out the head. Now, being that the neck is working the exact same way, I don't know if you can see it, there's the secondary ball joint inside. It means that when you are putting the head on, you may find the neck moving around on you you just want to kind of get a fix of it, kind of hold it in place, tell it who's boss. And there you've got the interchangeable head swapped out. And there's the two versions just so you can see. Either head works perfectly fine. I'm kind of from the rule of thumb that if I'm going to have the hood back, I'm probably going to display him with this. If I'm going to have the hood up, I'm probably going to display him with likely the mask. Either way, though, decent enough head sculpts. It's close enough to resembling the actor Stephen, uh, Stephen Amell, who plays Arrow. But I'm just going to pop this head off for the time being just to show you something I want to talk about when it comes to the hood. Okay, so when you put the hood on, the hood sort of just slides on, but it doesn't do a great job of staying in place. One thing I actually did do was when I have the hood, hold on there, camera, when I have the hood forward, you can kind of put the quiver in place like that, hold on, like, like that, there we go. And you can kind of tuck excess amounts of the, the hood behind it. What I would have liked that they could have done was added a wire frame to the inside brim, if you will, or the rim area there of the, the hood, just so you could have actually tucked these down like bent this if there was actually a wire in there just so it could have kept it a little bit more lower. I kind of like to have Arrow with the lower hood myself. Um, unfortunately, with nothing really being there, 
If you can get it in place, consider yourself lucky, but it's only lady luck that's helping you getting and keeping that hood currently as it is. It's not gonna stay in place. Um, I feel like there, there's just, like I said, it's just the chance of having it leaning forward that it stays in place, but certainly like a wire frame could have gone a long way to help with that. Uh, first coloring, actually it's decent. I mean, he's got some nice dark forest green colors making up the majority of his outfit and kind of like Flash. They've added some nice texturing there in the gray. It's nice complementary colors of the forest green and the gray. And here you've got the little uh, uh, silver accents there also added. And you've got a working zipper. Now I haven't taken any opportunity to move the zipper down. Uh, history has usually told me that if I'm moving a zipper down, it's always harder on these smaller figures, especially like the 1 8 scale figures, to get the fly going back up. So, I mean, there's probably an outfit underneath all that. All right, all right, you you convinced me. Underneath there, yeah, there is an outfit. Looks like they've added a little bit of extra padding to fill out his muscles. Let's pray, hope, hope, hope. Let me get the zipper back up, there we go. Whoosh. Primarily, like Flash, most, if not all, of Arrow's outfit is the material here, which feels kind of like, a, I don't wanna say like a polyester, but it kind of feels like, maybe like a nylon, I guess is the best way to describe it kind of has a bit of a plastic feel to it. Certainly does allow the figure to move like limbs and his legs and torso even. Doesn't feel like it's restricting. But like the Flash, the areas on his gauntlets, in Flash's case it was his gloves solely that were plastic, but Arrow has his gauntlets here that are in plastic and also his boots are in plastic. Now unfortunately, Flash did have posability in his toes. Arrow, on the other hand, doesn't. He only has just plastic boots. It means that there is little to no posability that you can actually get in his feet. Even though they are neat looking sculpted treads and decent looking boots, I wish that they could have had, at the very least, the same posability that Flash had. Flash, granted, only had it here. I wish they could have done the exact same for Arrow. For his accessories and a character being called Arrow, you would hope that he'd have at least several arrows and luckily he does but before we do that let's have a look at the bow that comes included now the bow does have a real working draw string which as you can see does have a little bit of elasticity to it it has been painted in what only looks to be one color of gray almost a gunmetal gray there's the handle portion here that's going to clip onto his hand probably likely like this and then you'd have your drawstring behind that. And of course he has the necessary hand to grip onto that as well. So to put it say in this hand, we're gonna go ahead and just fit this through his fingers. It's actually a lot easier. Let me just put the figure down here for a second. I personally find it easier. You may not find it easier, but I find it easier to put it around the fingers first because you have to get it around his thumb and the thumb is kind of the big problem with getting it into his hand. Once it is in his hand, then it's a whole lot easier clipping it back into the peg. And there you've got his bow. Of course, we've already had a look at his quiver, but again, just quickly touching base on this. A lot of the elements, like the arrows, for example, are being that they are thinner plastic. They're a little bit more on the, bra the brittle, fragile side. I mean, obviously they're not gonna break unless you're really rough housing with these. Um, the quiver, again, for posing the figure and for the rest of this review, I just kind of kept the quiver off just for the rest of that. I didn't definitely want to break any of those arrows. But if you are just displaying him as is, very easily you can put the quiver on back after the fact. Okay, so for his arrows, he does come, come with a standard arrow, his tried and true go-to, if you will. The main shaft, I suppose, if you will, is all black and you've got the end feathers here, there, and green. In this case, you've got the tip on this arrow as all silver. Then you get this one right here, which almost looks like it's an identical arrow until you realize it's got this extra part right here. Now, this is an arrow with a timer. You don't see any timing elements to it, but it is being advertised as being a little timer built into the end of the arrow. Okay, that's pretty cool. By the way, in case you were wondering as well, there is really no clearance to fit the extra arrows in place. Even if you fit them into the quiver, you're gonna be allotted that extra space on the top, so it's not really gonna make much sense. Um, this is pretty cool. He comes also with a flaming arrow. 
and they've given it this translucent plastic. It's almost actually the same color as the electricity that comes included with the 1 8 scale flash, also from uh, Star Ace. So that's pretty cool. You can see here how it's a little bit more yellow closer to the tip of the arrow and then it gets much darker in red color as it goes out to the outer tips of the flames. Again, I quite like that. Then you've got an arrow for catching. There's like this little clasp there on the top. I think this is to hook onto ledges if Arrow wants to pull himself up. And it's just a neat looking little add-on bonus. I love the fact that they give you so many unique arrows with him that it's not just, you know, same arrow, same arrow, same arrow. You get some variations to those. So you get that one. This one's fun. You get a little boxing arrow with a boxing glove there on the end. Painted in all silver with a little bit of the green and the black there banded at the bottom. Same regular shaft to the arrow. And then you get this little tiny small arrow which to be all honest I don't know where it fits on the figure. I looked onto the side. I actually looked onto the side of his gauntlets as well. I don't see a place where this extra arrow will fit. Where it will house necessarily. I thought maybe it would go on the side there. Like I said, I thought it would go into the uh, gauntlet area on his arm. Um, so he does come with this little smaller, smaller arrow. I'm just not quite sure where specifically that goes. Then he comes with a series of interchangeable hands. Now currently these hands, these not these hands, but those hands there are for holding the bow and for holding the arrows. But then you've got a couple of other just kind of dynamic hands spread out fingers, if you will, if you want to kind of display them in, in really neat, unique, unique poses. This is kind of the stuff that I wish the Flash could have also included as well. Then we can go ahead and look at this hand here. Now, this hand, as you can see, has gripping clenched fingers. Uh, the perfect fingers, if you will, as well, that if you want to have, for example, the, the bow drawn, you can take the drawstring for that and you can clip it around these fingers. They sort of hook in behind the finger section here of his hand. It's kind of a little bit difficult to kind of get it behind there. There you go. But you can actually have him drawing back the bow. And actually, as I did in the beginning of this review, you can then take one of the other arrows and then you can fit it so it looks like he's pulling back and he's about to fire off, which is really neat. I like that. We'll go ahead and take this out of his hand, being very careful. This is not as brittle or as thin of a plastic as the arrows, but you should still be very weary of that, that you don't get too rough when displaying that with him. And actually, while we're at it, why don't we put the quiver back into his the, the back straps there of his shoulders, and we'll have a look at arrows articulation. Then for his articulation, I don't even know why I put the quiver back on, because moving his head is only likely to pop that off anyways. Why don't we bring back his hood? Now his head, we've already looked at before. His head rotates all the way around, but then he's got a secondary ball joint here, allowing the head to tilt further back and further forward than what you would if you just had the ball joint right there. The arms hinge out kind of the exact same way as Flash. You're not limited there at all. The arms move forward, the arms move back, You've got a swivel right where the bicep attaches itself to the shoulder, and then you've got a single hinge on the elbow. The hands rotate all the way around, and they can also hinge back and forth too. For Arrow's torso, it has a crunch forward and back, and he also has the waist swivel. Now, moving and tilting the torso too far back, the jacket is really only about the same length of his torso, so any bit of additional movement, you'll probably see a bit of a gap where you see the white undershirt. Um, his legs do split forward. They are a little on the tighter side, though, than I noticed with Flash's. Flash, I could bring the legs a little bit more out. Arrow seems a little bit more restricted. I guess it's because the, the pants are a little bit more fitted to his legs. Um, he has a top swivel cut on his thigh. Flash, or Arrow, also has a double hinge on the knee there. And he also has posability in the foot. But like I said, with the boots, unfortunately, he doesn't have a separate foot from the top portion of his boot. So you can't move the feet back and forth. You can rotate them all the way around, but unfortunately you don't have the same hinging that Flash had. Flash had all one boot as well, 
but at the very least, he did also have he did also have the posability there in the foot. Arrow sadly doesn't have that. Now, don't let the small stature of Arrow fool you. Star Ace has put a lot of time and a lot of accessories packed inside with this figure under the banner of the Real Masters series. Other companies have also done the same similar treatment, and I'm wondering if the reasoning why they had to release this guy as a 1 8 scale collectible figure was because Star Ace couldn't get the licensing for Arrow or Flash. I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but it may explain why we're getting these guys as 1 8 scale collectible figures and not 12 inch tall figures. Either way though, I really think they put a lot of care and certainly a lot of accessories packed included along with Arrow here. Not only do you have two interchangeable heads like we did get with Flash, but you also get a bow, you get a quiver, and you get a whole ton of cool different arrows, which works out to be a really neat looking figure, even if he's a little bit smaller than what you're used to getting from Star Ace. Speaking of also these being smaller, the price point are also a little bit less than a conventional 12 inch tall figure. Uh, for example, if you guys are looking to pick this one up right now, he is sold out, but he was listed on Sideshow Collectibles website for $128.99. So $129 US dollars gives you this guy as opposed to the normal $200, about $200 price point that Star Ace 12 inch tall figures are. So not only are you getting a smaller version of the figure, but you're also getting a much more affordable figure as well. This works out well for fans of Arrow that wanted to get a collectible of him, but maybe just didn't have the space or the wallet to afford a, a taller 12 inch tall figure. Um, like I said, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, it is sold out in some online stores, but you should still be able to score this guy if you're looking to pick him up for yourself. Today, we were having a look at the Arrow from the television series Arrow. Uh, this was the Star Ace 1 8 scale collectible figure from the Real Masters series. Now, if you guys haven't had a chance to check out my Flash review, also of the 1 8 scale collectible figures, why well, you go back and have a look at that now. And also make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more Star Ace reviews will be coming to this channel soon. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do, and I'll see you next time.